In this episode, we're going to keep on populating the playlist components with data. Click, click. This is Dev Tips with guest hosts David and MPJ. What did we do yesterday? We populated the playlists, the David, the name title, and these aggregate components. We divide them into a playlist counter and a an hours count. And what we'll do now is that we want to take this mock data that we just printed out and attach the actual uh, fake server data to these playlist components. Yeah, exactly. Because these here, they are not using the the actual fake data that we made up. Only this is using that. This is actually hard coded values that we just copy pasted into the HTML and we would like React to actually render data. I would like to now have these playlist components generated from the data. Yes. From the server data. How would you go about doing that? Okay, so let's remind ourselves how this server data looks. Uh, we have this fake server data object. It contains a user uh, object. And in turn, that user object has a playlist property, which is an array of these playlists. And each playlist has a name property and it has a songs property. Uh, let's leave these properties uh, at the wayside for now and just the first thing that we want to do is iterate over the playlist and create a playlist for each each item. Yeah, sure. Uh, what we're going to do is that we are going to do curly brackets to tell uh, React that this is now a space for JavaScript and not HTML. Uh, and we are going to grab the server data from the state. Yeah, and because we did the check previously, we know that we have, if we have a user, we have the data. Oh, you mean this check up yeah. here, right? Yes, exactly. This means that we are sure that we have server data. Uh, and we are sure that we have a uh, a user. We can rely on that here. But there could be that you have a user that doesn't use playlists. That right? is true. That is so true. we should actually check. I know this might be too soon, but I think you should check for playlists. Sure, but that's speculative. If, if I check now, we're not sure that our code is working. Okay. Uh, don't write code that you're not testing. Uh, this state server data uh, user dot playlists. Yep. And um, oh, let's see. We're we are gonna do. We're gonna introduce a new concept here that we haven't talked about before, called map. Map is that like for each, but special? Sorta. Uh, like jQuery dot each. No, that's that's probably a, it's it's. It's a way of transforming an array to another array. Okay. So what map does is that it will walk through uh, the playlist array and uh, it will take every playlist and run it through a transformation function that we specify uh, and create a new object for every array. So it transforms an array to another, uh, another array of the same length. And it will return that array. So we want to, this tries to create a new array here based off of the playlists array. Yeah. Uh, so what we're gonna do list list uh, is that for each playlist, uh, yeah, we are going to. I think we're just gonna return a playlist for now. So I'll uh, delete this and see how that looks. Oh, so if this works, we will have four playlists, yes. which will look just the same. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so we're that far. Uh, so just to quickly say here, like we are doing an arrow function here. Uh, previously, we talked about arrow functions. They are uh, these nice, a bit shorter functions. Uh, and previously, we had both curly brackets in there, mm -hmm. uh, and we had a I had parents around the arguments, and we also had a return statement. This uh, thing, so I'm gonna say it to show you that this is equivalent, this still works. Uh, but here, 
this is just one line. And that means that we can omit the return statement and we can omit the uh, curly brackets. And since this is only one argument to the function, we can also omit, uh, omit the params. So this okay. is just a shorter way of writing it. That's neat. Yeah, it's clean. It looks very, very good. And now should we uh, like add something to the playlist component, like each playlist? Yeah. How like, would we do that? We should probably like... Uh, like we could return a name. Yeah, exactly. We, let's try with the name. So what uh, right now there's no way for us to pass in the name to the playlist. What we want to do is uh, pass in something like this. Uh, playlist.name. Uh, but this will not do anything. Because while playlist is getting the name now from our uh, map here, it's not actually making use of that because we have hard coded uh, hard coded this thing here. So let's find that. I'm just gonna search for it in the app. And there we go. In order to uh, make this uh, make use of the uh, property that we passed in, we are going to write this dot props for the properties object and uh, write name. Oh yeah, this is what we did in the previous episode where we, because now we added it as an argument down below in the like HTML name attribute. That is true. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. So yeah, now we have the names. So my favorite, discover weekly, and the playlist, the best playlist. Yeah. But here in the playlist component, now we don't. We only have this name property. We don't have anything else about the playlist, right? No. Because that's the only thing we sent into the component. That is true. We only sent in the name. Perhaps we should send in the entire playlist. I think so. That would make sense. Because we would like to have some kind of, some of the top songs there. That is true. And eventually an image. So let's do that. Let's change this so that it actually passes in uh, the playlist equals the playlist. And now this will break. Yeah, exactly, because it doesn't find a name now, because we're looking for the name property. Uh, so we're going to change this, and it's now going to say props.playlist.name. And now, why are we using map for this? Why aren't we just using a for loop, a for each? Uh, well, you could use a for loop. Let's actually redo this using the for loop. The nice thing about map is that we don't require any intermediate processing because uh, we can we can do it in place. That is why we use map. Mm -hmm. uh, if let's say that we want to create this playlist, uh, this dot state uh, dot uh, server data dot user dot play playlists. And we use a uh, for let i equals zero and da, 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 do this. Uh, I keep forgetting how this works. Well, i is less than the playlist length mm. and i plus plus there and then we create a new playlist um, playlist elements perhaps mm -hmm. which is an array exactly and then why uh, for every playlist we push a new uh, playlist to the array. I'm going to copy this here. You can do that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Let's see. Uh, yes, I should be able to. Yes. Uh, and now we for every... Oh, hang on. Yeah, I need to actually grab this as well. Hang on. Let playlist be the ith element in the array. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not forget. I yes, I always forget that. Uh, hang on. I have forgotten something. What what is breaking? 
This is I cannot right. read properly playlists of undefined. Oh yeah, because we have to now uh, uh, this, this the check. check. Um, Actually, what I meant was that you could instead of map use a dot for each. Yeah, exactly. But this is the same principle. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna change it to for each as well because I don't think that everybody knows for each. Ah, all right. Uh, and this is the most basic example. Yeah. The... Uh, but we, we, we're going to do it with for each as well. But still, we need to check that we actually have some playlists here. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, dun, dun, dun. I think you have to check for the user only. Oh, yeah, that's true. There we go. Uh, there. And now we are we have can do the uh, da, 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 da. we can re put the playlist element in place here i think mm, okay yeah but but it has to yeah, also <laughs> exist so i move that outside yeah. okay so now uh, it works and i i could remove our uh, map operation so now we have the equivalent thing in a mm -hmm. for loop. Uh, so as you see here, like the map uh, has the uh, also has the we can do this in place here, mm -hmm. which is very nice. We could, I guess, we could like do some extremely fancy like inline function evaluation to stuff this in place, but it would be uh, hard to read, and a lot of people don't understand yeah, the the thing that is ifies. Uh, so this is short and you can do it in place. Okay. Uh, I could, if I do this with for each, mm. like you uh, mentioned before, we can do it a bit shorter, but it will still be the same problem that we, we couldn't do it in place. But can't you do it in place? No. If you do it for each there, just on the map. No, you can't. Okay. Uh, like, uh, let, uh, I'm gonna show you why right there. Hang on, let's just do it here. Uh, playlist. Uh, oh, sorry. We're gonna do this. Uh, user dot playlist, and we're gonna for each it. Yeah. And for each uh, playlist, we we are gonna do this. And let's remove this. We no longer need that. I think we're going to get the same effect now. Cool. Mm -hmm. So it's shorter with a for each. Yeah. Uh, but this thing, we what we are doing here is that we're constructing this playlist elements thing. Aha, uh, uh -huh, because you can't return stuff from the for each. Is that why we're not using the for each down below here? Because this line looks very similar to this line. Yeah, it's, uh, it's extremely similar. So if I use for each here, uh, what exactly am I gonna uh, return. return? Yeah, so that disappeared. Exactly, because it, it, all it does is... Yeah. Okay, cool. So that is why we need to create this with, with for each. For each doesn't do as much as map. What map does is basically a for each that also does this thing for us automatically. Hmm. Like this is a very com common pattern where you do just, oh, you create a new empty array and then you for each over an array and you push all new elements in it. This is exactly what map does for you. It's just built into the language. I'm convinced. Let's use map. Remove that for <laughs> each shit. All right, cool. No, but, but it's good that you ask. Uh, map it. Because it, the, the benefits are not obvious. So let's uh, pull out the songs and uh, render the actual songs in each playlist component. Yep. Blop. Uh, let's go up to the components. So we have, now we can do a map inside of here. Great. Do, do, do. So we know that if we remind ourselves how the data looks, it has the playlist. Each playlist here has a songs. Yeah. All right. And we do this dot uh, props dot playlist 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 dot songs and then we're gonna map over that and for every song 
we're going to render an li element. I list that then. Control. And that is going to have the song. Uh, I think it's just it's just strings, right? No, so it's, the it's, name. Uh, it's, a, it's objects that has a name property and a duration. So let's go back here. Song.name. Exactly. So here we're switching between HTML and, um, and JavaScript. So we need new uh, curly brackets. And I'm going to hit song.name. And I think this is going to break for because reasons. I don't know. Uh, why is that? Expected corresponding JSX closing tag. The close the UL, the unlisted. Oh. Uh, so it's sort of checking, validating your HTML for you. It does, it does. But that's another thing with Create React App that it does work. Yeah. Oh, this, nice. nice. It works. And then because we just copy pasted the data, that's why it looks like this. We can just put something, something, hallelujah, and uh, some other song. Like, uh, hey, hey, Monica. That's a very famous Swedish song. It, it is, unfortunately. So here we have it it's attached to the data. That looks great. And if we were to have an image here, we would put that image stuff into the component as well. Yep. Uh, if I can find the component, like here. Yeah. Exactly. We might do that in the uh, the styling segment coming up. Yeah. We are, we're gonna commit this to the uh, to Git, but before I do this little thing that this is duplicated, yes, I think that's unnecessary. So I'm just gonna put that into a variable called playlist. There, and now I can just call these. Playlist. And what you see here is that uh, Matthias doesn't use semicolons, and I do from time to time. You don't need semicolons in JavaScript. I just do it because I'm used to the semicolons. So. Yeah, like it's it's not good practice to do what we do here, uh, which is to do to mix the styles. Uh, that is that is definitely frowned upon. But, but we don't care because this is just to show the stakeholder yes, our idea, the concept. Exactly. We will still rebuild this into a proper app if we get the, the correct feedback. Exactly. We're not trying to do the super engineering kind of stuff here. We're trying to uh, make a high fidelity prototype that works and demonstrates a concept. Yeah. Concept. So commit. Yes. Uh, let's have a look at switching to GitHub desktop. Uh, and uh, we have some sample data here that is changed. And we also uh, implemented the properties in the playlist. And here is a line that we just added. Can you just, no. Uh, and uh, then there is, we replaced the, um, the, the fake hard coded playlist here with the, um, the act, with, with a map. All right, cool. Uh, what do we call this commit? Uh, imp dynamic, uh, dynamic listing of playlists from server data. Listing of uh, fake server data. Playlists. Playlists data. Great. Commit to master. Push it. Push, 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 push. There we go. Now, if we go to github.com slash mpj slash better playlists, we will find that this commit is now in the repository and viewable. Great. In the next video, we'll create a filter for the playlists with auto completion. You can click here to view that episode. You should do that. Do that. Perhaps take a break first. Click, 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 click